questions here? So my question is, how does universal grammar develop according to Deacon? Yes, Terry? Okay, so universal grammar um, doesn't, well, so first, you know, he's saying it doesn't develop, you know, in a language module, but it, it develops through this convergence of um, the, I guess, the, um, the constraints on child learning and the requirements of symbolic reference. Okay, and how do Pinker and Deacon differ in their explanation for why universal grammar exists? Kind of the same question, but kind of just extending it to Pinker a little bit. Why does universal grammar exist? For Pinker? Somebody? Come on, anybody? Yes. Your name? Right. Thinks, Deacon thinks what? Oh yeah, good. All right, and your name? Jackson. Jackson, thank you. And how do Pinker and Deacon differ in the way they explain the compatibility between human language and the human brain? So there's a compatibility. There's something that the human brain matches human language. And how, how did each of them explain that, that compatibility? All right, so I'll, I'll give you a hint. So um, Pinker is basically saying that the human brain changed in order to match human language, in a sense, right? That, you know, it developed this language module. So, so that the compatibility, the, the matching, came about through a changing of the human brain. Deacon is saying, no, it's actually not the brain that changed, it's the language that changed. That there's a, there's a kind of transformation of language to match the human brain. That's not totally true. He's really seeing what he's going to see sort of call a co-evolution of language and the brain, that they're, they're both somehow evolving in reaction to each other. But we're going to get to that, okay?